I wanted to talk to you guys about how to hunt whitetails by the weather because it is the single most important factor, the weather, um, that'll influence your hunt um, all season long. And this is something going back that I've been using since the early 90s. Um, literally, I talked about it before. I have a great stand planned out towards the end of October, a pre-rut buck. And um, on the way to the stand, the Oakland Press said the weather was going to be X, Y, Z, whatever it was. It looked good. Um, I listened to the marine weather forecast, which is all we had to go by at that time in the Thumb area of Michigan. And uh, it just said that the winds are going to be opposite and that stand wasn't going to work out. I quickly just turned around and went home because bad weather day, bad winds, and uh, it wasn't going to be a good hunt. And I'm not going to hunt and try to push it if the weather's bad because the weather has guided me to success for 30 years. And I know it can you. Um, again, the single most important factor. What I've done in the past, and it's going back 12, 15 years, before anybody was even talking about hunting the weather online. Of course, people talked about barometric pressure and things that really didn't matter when it came to deer hunting, but actually hunting the weather factors of change that make and influence deer movement is critical, and that's what I've specialized in for a long time. In the past, what I do is take a 45-day forecast, take a screenshot, put it on Facebook, mark red, green, and yellow dots on dates that should work and why and which which ones wouldn't work and why. And, uh, and then I'd take charts from Weather Underground or another weather service and take those charts and, uh, and put dots on them and explain you know, when you should be hunting. And you know, recently in the last 10 years, I'd just pick a random city somewhere in the country that might relate to people and uh, pick that weather forecast out so that you can learn from the weather. Not that that's exactly related to your area, but the weather is pretty constant from Minnesota, Wisconsin, over to Michigan, Ohio, into Pennsylvania, New York, and over into Vermont, New Hampshire. A lot of times those weather patterns sweep across the country. They're a day or two apart. Say example, for example, Western Wisconsin is about a day off from central Michigan. Before, again, take these charts and explain why you should be hunting certain days. Again, this will guide you to success. If you had limited time in the woods, if you want to make the most out of your sits, if you want to get the highest efficiency per mature buck that you see, which is I try to shoot a buck um, every six or seven sits. Narrow it down because I purely hunt by the weather. And that keeps me out of the woods and spending time with the family, my wife Diane, friends, whatever it might be, my children, and, uh, and then certainly more time for work too because I'm balancing all those by hunting with the weather um, as someone who's very busy otherwise and can't afford to take a lot of time off. What I did in the past, again, charts. Put a dot here, dot there, and let you know. What's really cool now is I've worked with HuntWise to create HuntCast 2.0, and we worked about eight or nine months to refine and infuse my el weather algorithm that I published in the 2015 November rut issue of Outdoor Life, infuse that into their weather app called HuntCast. And, uh, and now we've refined it enough to where the days that I would look in a forecast and tell people, you, you should hunt this day, you should stay out of the woods this day, this is a maybe day. I can look at the weather forecast here on HuntCast and my head is in this app. It's pretty darn cool. I have product sponsor sponsors. This is a little bit different. This is something that is a part of me that I've used for three decades. So I can scroll through here. I picked a random city, Bedford, Indiana. And just going through Bedford, Indiana, I'm looking through here, I'm looking at uh, today, October 7th, it's a 3% day. Uh, high of 83, uh, 51 degrees. It's been warming up each day. There's no major weather that's crossed through. There's no temperature drop, so it's a very bad day. It's a 3% day. There's no amount of 3% days that can equal 70% day on a, on a high value sit. Um, you go to the next day, Thursday, uh, tomorrow. Temperature's dropping seven degrees. Uh, a little bit cooler at night and that jumps up to 43%. So not a great day, but a good day. That's one of those yellow days that uh, you can stay and uh, pick a stand, maybe not your best stand, especially if you have a better day coming up, but um, a good value day. You can see on Friday it actually gets warmer, 78 degrees, and no matter what the barometric pressure is doing, that's not gonna be a better day. It's actually a 0% day, meaning this is a very low probability that you should be hunting that day. Um, you look at uh, it drops five degrees, there's a little weather rolling in um, that puts you up to a 36% day. Kind of a stop day, not a great day. That's on October 10th. 
The next day, however, that weather clears out, the rain, and you look at Sunday, October 11th, is a 53% day. Now I'm narrowing down this to where I'm looking at these weather values at 5 p.m. the afternoon, because this is a time where you should really be focusing on evening sits, those evening cold front sits, the evening feeding front sits, no different than the, the night that Diane shot her buck on uh, last Monday, that would have been a 72% day, 80% day, somewhere around in there. Scrolling through here, you see that temperature drop from 73 to 68, you get a 53% day, not bad. The next day, temperatures are holding 38%. The next day, even though it's slightly dropping, only an 18% day, because there's no change. In all of this weather app and, and formula, deer don't relate to some magical barometric pressure in the head. What they do relate to is weather change. And so if the weather's changing, if the weather's getting clear, if the storms are subsiding, if the winds are dropping, but not necessarily calm, but they're just making a change. It could be they just changed from 50 miles an hour to 30 mile an hour. Could be they drop from 30 to 15. It's all relative, it's all the same. And so you're looking for change. Could be that thunder showers just stopped, lightning, thunderstorms, hard rain, snow, sleet, hail, all those conditions have passed. Now deer can actually hear a lot better. They can see a lot better, they're less stressed, they can get up and feed the way they should. And then the temperatures drop. Temperatures going up, shut down deer movement. Temperatures going down, increased deer movement. And it all hinges back to them burning calories, needed energy, supplementing, recreating, replenishing that energy, and then moving forward. Now, when you look through here, you know we have the 53% day, it drops down to 18 because there's not much going on. But then look at that change from it's a little bit cloudy, there's a little bit of weather on Tuesday, October 13th, and then it drops 12 degrees to 57 on Wednesday, that weather clears out and that produces an 81% day. That's what I would see in my head, that's what I would forecast. The next day after that's pretty decent, 38%. There's a five degree temperature drop going into the 16th of October, that gets you to 30%. It increases to 65 degrees on the 17th and that's a 3% day. Again, these are the forecasts and these are conditions of change that I've looked at for about 30 years and refine this to what I see today. And it's not that much different than what I saw the last few years. It's the same, um, little, little degrees of difference, but you can see the rest of the month here after that 81% day, it gets warmer, stays consistent, actually keeps gradually getting warmer. There's no major weather changes. You can see a little weather change with some clouds, a chance of showers on Monday. October 19th, and that's where you get a 10% day on Tuesday the 20th, but really not that much value change. It actually only dropped a degree, and you had that weather change drop out. And so those are the conditions of change for how you hunt the weather and how you hunt whitetails in the weather. These are the only changes that I believe in. Rest assured, if I thought barometric pressure was a factor, I'd add it in. It is a factor when the temperature drops, barometric pressure meets that point, that's a great day. The barometric pressure happens to reflect that because change has taken place, the weather's cleared, the temperatures have dropped. But even if there's a storm coming three days later and the barometric pressure is still low, that same day would still be a great day because the same changes of temperature drop have changed and that's what you're looking for is change. A lot of times barometric pressure goes up a second day and, uh, and there's a better rating. It's not because of the barometric pressure, it's because major winds died down to more moderate winds. And then that high humid air with cloud cover changed into dry air. And the deer notice that and it makes a move when the air is clean and when there's that temperature drop and when those conditions subside of wind or rain or moisture, that's when you hunt. And that's why you might get a little bit of a difference even if it goes up three degrees, but it isn't the barometric pressure that went up that caused the change. It was the change in conditions and the subsiding of those conditions to make it a lot more enjoyable and lower stress for whitetails to move about, promote hunger, increase their hunger urges, and be on their feet during the daylight. Because folks, that's all that matters the most. You know, during the rut, the rut happens at the same time every year, um, but the type of weather you have, not the moon or anything else, is gonna determine if those bucks are on their feet during the daylight. And rest assured, if they're not on your land during the daylight somewhere, let's say the land's been overpressured, whatever the factors that contributed to that, they're on their feet somewhere during the daylight if those weather conditions are prime for them to be be on their feet. This is a great tool for you. 
something that you can just look at your fingertips. I like looking through it because this is what my head sees in the weather. They transferred into this weather app, Huncast 2.0. We give lots of tips on here, annual whitetail shift, fall patterns. We'll talk about the um, signing phase where bucks are leaving a lot of sign, but it's not quite the pre-rut. We'll talk about all those phases we go through the season and all year long for hunting antlers, shed antlers, scouting bedding areas, taking your stands down, putting them up. And uh, there's all phases, and especially when you get into the summer scouting, spring scouting, winter scouting, all your scouting all year long is determined by the weather as far as when you see those deer moving. I encourage you to practice it now, use it, use these weather tips, even if you want to just figure it out on yourself. But I know for me, it's a lot less work me just scrolling through, seeing red, green, and yellow, as opposed to creating these dots on a, on a screenshot of a 15 day weather forecast and doing it myself. It's right here now. And those are the weather factors that'll guide you to success each and every fall. I hope you use them. I believe in this. And most of all, I believe in it because I love the thousands of stories that I get in comments throughout the years talking about how people use HuntCast or use these weather algorithms, use this formula, use the recommendations, and they found big bucks. You can look out October 14th. We're still several days away. Will that weather hold? Will there be a 12 degree drop? You know, maybe it'll be a 10 degree drop. Maybe it'll be a six degree drop, but you rest assured something's happening. Something big is happening. You can see it a long ways in the weather. And, uh, and I know there'll be some good weather around you around that time. Look at the weather forecast, see these changes, learn how to hunt it, and you'll find success this fall and for the rest of your hunting life. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, you're obviously interested in white tail habitat solutions, what I have to teach, and you will love my new web class series. The first one is how to design your white tail property. It's out now. The link is in the description. I invite you to check it out. It's on my website. Can't wait to hear about it.